Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Much like racing cars, warships are all about who's behind the wheel. For warfare officers in this position though, there's even more at stake from effectively operating a ship to getting the right crew together. To fulfill that mission, international naval warfare training is crucial to success. Somewhere on the Pacific Ocean, warships sailed into formation as Rim of the Pacific 2022 began. As the most important international maritime exercise in the world, RIMPAC gives sailors the training and confidence they need to connect with others, sharpen their skills, and improve their safety. Sailing from Southern California to Hawaii, this unique conference included more than 25,000 sailors. Over 170 military aircraft, three subs, almost 40 ships, and nearly 30 nations. Started in the early 1970s, RIMPAC 2022 was the world's 28th sea-based exercise. Hosted every two years for the last five decades, last year's RIMPAC took place at Pearl Harbor and was administered by the Navy's Indo-Pacific Command under the control of the Governor of Hawaii. But that's not all. In addition to the Navy, other armed forces like Hawaii National Guard, Coast Guard, and Marine Corps join in the activities too. The most important part of these naval training exercises is to see whether or not its ships will sink or swim. Literally. In 2022, the retired warship USS Denver was shipped out to sea for a sanctioned sinking exercise called SYNC-X, which took place in Pearl Harbor at RIMPAC 2022. Here is the craziest part. SYNC at Sea Live Fire Training Exercises, or SYNC-X, cost billions of dollars to sink decommissioned ships with powerful missiles. But not every ship is eligible for this honor. Rather, sink X requirements are all about the vessel's suitability. Everything from cost estimates and ship inspections is considered. Before any ship is sunk, the Navy checks the environment to ensure deep water sinking is safe.
This includes removing hazardous waste from decommissioned ships before they sail to the bottom of the sea. There are many ways to launch missiles nowadays, whether from ships at sea or from forces on land. In September 2020, USS Shiloh, a guided missile cruiser, launched its harpoon as part of SYNCX. But this was not an ordinary war game. Nine. Meanwhile, at RIMPAC 2022, Five. things got heated as military forces counted down from 10 for their heroic harpoon missile launch. As a matter of fact, sailors from around the globe, including the US, Malaysia, Canada, and Australia stuck together to sink the former USS Rodney M. Davis, another decommissioned ship during SYNCX. But why, you might ask? The answer is simple. To build their skills in live firing, targeting, and tactics at sea against surface targets. But here's the deal. Decommissioned ships stay sunk at the bottom of the sea, meaning that they have to be environmentally friendly enough to avoid negatively impacting the seafloor. That means removing petroleum, fluorocarbon, mercury, floatable materials, and trash before sinking a ship. You might be thinking to yourself, what about Canadian warships? Luckily for you, you'll be happy to know that Canadian military forces are also included in war games. Introducing HMCS Winnipeg, a Royal Canadian Navy frigate that participated in last year's RIMPAC exercise. However, instead of launching another harpoon missile, this military ship participated in a naval torpedo exercise called Torpex that took place in the Pacific Ocean. Thanks to its dedication to sustainability and the environment, naval forces always make sure to remove torpedoes from the ocean before they sink. These are typically recovered by smaller boats supported by air teams to avoid torpedoes becoming a part of the natural landscape. There's so much more to explore in the world of surface and ship missiles. Speaking of sinking, at RIMPAC 2022, Marines from around the world, including Indonesia and America, joined forces with the Australian Army to conduct a live fire exercise with snipers at sea. With snipers from Australia's 2nd Battalion in the lead, Marine Corps Base Hawaii hosted the Royal Australian Regiment at a tropical firing range. At this specific sniper live fire training, soldiers and sailors from around the planet gathered together to receive instructions from the Australian Army for their on-land mission. Covered in camouflage, they sank low to the ground, 
surrounded by bushes to blend into the island environment. Equipped with high caliber weaponry, Australia's 2nd Battalion ensured sailors and soldiers from other units had the knowledge it takes to hit a long distance target. And then there are door gunners, another essential part of RIMPAC. At Poha Kulawa Training Area in 2012, soldiers from Marine Light Attack Helicopter Squadron 169 performed live fire training and aerial patrol over the Hawaiian Islands. With nine nations and 2,200 personnel in place, RIMPAC 2012 focused on both land-based and amphibious operations. You might be wondering to yourself, why is this so important? The solution is surprisingly simple, to enhance joint and multinational interoperability. In terms of safety, search and rescue missions are a must for most branches of the military forces. That's why Coast Guardsmen and sailors honed these necessary skills as part of the 2014 RIMPAC exercise in Hawaii. Stranded passengers and sinking ships are par for the course during this amphibious drill, replaying one of the worst case scenarios that could happen at sea. Maneuvering drills were also critical for sailors to master during this mission. The conclusion of BRIMPAC 22 was a moment to remember, mainly because it included divers from the Australian Navy gaining familiarization training in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Based at Mobile Diving and Salvage Unit 1, they suited up with the proper diving gear to prepare to explore the ocean floor. Fitted with oxygen tanks and specialized helmets, soldiers dove into a deep sea simulation, allowing them to practice their skills without actually risking their lives to do so. Once they gain familiarity with this diving practice, they're ready to go into open water. When it's all said and done, safety is the top priority of RIMPAC, SYNCX, and TORPAX training. With so much money put into these training sessions with torpedoes, harpoons, missiles, and more, it's no wonder why the U.S. has one of the most powerful naval forces in the world. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.